Indeed, greetings unto you, beloved and holy friends. Thank you so much for joining me again on another video, another stream. I appreciate you being here with me. Let's melt more into being, shall we? And <sighs> and I had such a good day. I had such an absolutely fantastic day. Like it started off with me sleeping 11 hours literally 11 hours of sleep <laughs> I woke up felt like extremely rested felt really great uh, was hungry though got into the, the kitchen area and had a conversation with my mom I wouldn't say it was upsetting but the nature of the conversation wasn't exactly uh, enthusiasm invoking if you will right it wasn't something that made me happy and I felt it for myself like this shouldn't be something that I should have any attachment towards so I kind of went outside and I wrote forgiveness on my little Garrick as I was rolling myself a joint and I lit it with this intention of forgiveness and as I'm smoking it I just started walking you know and I walk down the road here I open the gate and I continue to walk and I walk and I walk and as I'm smoking this forgiveness joint if you will I I kind of go through my own head you know all of the people that I've had grudges towards all of the people that I felt hurt me so much in my youth in the way that they said things to me and the things that they did to me and the things that they exposed me to and I literally as I was walking as I was inhaling the smoke and breathing it out, I was just like feeling this forgiveness flow from me. And I got to the the destination I was heading towards. It's this little, I call it affectionately Magneta. It's this like little dried up volcano, small little spout. Hey, master, thank you for joining us, friend. It's dolphin guy. Damn, am I gonna be remembered as dolphins guy? Fine, I'm okay with that as well. Anyway, so I'm like, I'm I'm arriving there. Taking the thorn out of my foot, sorry. I broke it off. No. So I arrive there and I see, or at least I feel like I'm looking at something. And I feel so much novelty. I can't I can't get this freaking thorn out of my toe. It's okay. I'll need a tweezer. And I felt so much novelty in that situation with the colors that was presented to me in these rock faces. That I was like, I have to capture this. And as I'm capturing this, like the, the little pup we have, Kiki is there with me and we're like being playful and she's being exploratory and I'm exploring and I kind of climb up to this little mountain face and I, and I just start exploring. And as I'm exploring, I'm filming this exploring of just this nature environment. And I legitimately just felt like so human in nature and it was blissful. It was absolutely blissful. Edmund, one of our friends that also tuned into these streams, on the Discord, he had this this idea to share like a prompt, a prompt for creation. And the prompt for this month was pure bliss. And creating a piece of art based on something that's as complex as what pure bliss is supposed to be, I felt such a big block because I didn't want to express myself or do anything personally that would ex like basically express what pure bliss would be for me because I felt in that I would form a judgment based on what my pure bliss is and as a result of that as well someone else could form a judgment based on what my pure bliss is and while, while I was in that moment experiencing just the the ruggedness of nature walking between the little branches like literally crawling through little nooks and crannies pushing thorns out of the way seeing these beautiful rock faces that have like these remnants of like bubbling lava on them and it's just so beautiful and having the dogs kind of like follow me along in this like little journey that i'm on and then i was like this what i'm experiencing right now is pure bliss and i started capturing it and as i'm capturing it i'm like i'm trying to be cognizant of how i'm moving my camera because i want to like edit it together so there's like something is cohesive and like suddenly my brain just goes into working in a completely different way of how I'm seeing the world because I felt like I had this filter of direct perception on it 
and then I, I attached this filter of indirect perception of this environment that I was in and I was like yeah this is <laughs> this is a trip this is so cool and I kept like walking through these little rock faces and I got to this point that is what I call affectionately like the space seat it's like a seat like it's almost like a seat it's like this rock face is kind of tilted and it has like a notch so like imagine like a bump and then you can sit with your bum in this like bump and it's just the most comfortable seat ever but it's icy cold right because it's like this metallic type of rock material so it absorbs all of the cold from the night and it keeps it even with the sun shining so i laid down on this thing and it's like freezing cold i like literally feel it sucking the the heat out of my body and as i'm looking up towards the sky the sky become almost becomes bluer and bluer and bluer to me like it becomes almost like this surrealistic experience of the sensation of the cold is reinforcing the information that i'm seeing and in the information that i'm seeing is reinforcing the sensation of the cold and it was like this this feedback loop of it like re-reminding me of just how trippy of an experience just being a human being is right we associate the color blue with the feeling of cold and i had both of them at the same time and as a result of that it literally quite literally became more and more blue and yeah had kiki with me she was all over the place trying to make herself comfortable as well did a little bit of a meditation some breathing exercises opened my eyes even more blue again it was just so beautiful and i tried to capture as much of that and i want to now turn that experience into my bliss piece at least the bliss piece that i i want to give you friends and while i was there as well i picked up a bunch of little little rocks that i plan on making some pendants with and giving them away to you friends do you speak klingong nie any yiltemol nie maar ek kan afrikaans praat dis nie yiltemol klingong nie maar dit is Ergens tussen Engels en Klingong. Ik kan dit tenminste zeggen. Dus er is twee verschillende talen aan jullie vandaag. Food reveal, unexpected content. Oh, ding, 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 ding. Dude, now there's like one site. I actually believe there is a site that is dedicated just to people on the internet's feet. So I've, I've outed myself, dude. Hey, Jasmine. Hello, friend. It's a pleasure to be here with you all once again. It's a pleasure to have you here as well, Jasmine. Thank you for joining us on this blessed day. Simon, I'm happy that you're here as well, dude. You blew up, man. Simon was front page in today with his, like, sm what did you say? Wake and skate? With his Wake and Skate stream. Also, you have, like, a commands bot in right now. Is that commands bot attached to the Sweat and Smiles Discord as well? And I see, like, a GPF bot, dude. Dude, dude, explain to me what's happening there, man. That's some cool stuff. Hey, truly yours. It's nice to have you here as well. Why would he? Why would I speak Klingon? I mean, maybe I look like an extreme... It's Star Trek, right? Maybe I look like an extreme Star Wars fan. <laughs> Thank you for the heartwarming friend. I appreciate it. Old Yeller. Good morning, Melton friends. Nice to have you here. We have Dream Notes here as well. Hey, friend. It's nice to have you here. Thank you for joining us. Please block me. Accomplished pay. We've been through this, friend. I'm not going to block you. I'm not going to block you. I love you too much, friend. We want you to be here with us. To share this space with us. Right, even if you hate me so much that you want me to block you so you can never ever see me again, I want you to see me again. Because if you see me again, that means I can see you potentially again. And that means that we can potentially co-create again. And I don't want to like create a possibility, a reality for myself in which that is never possible. Right? Does that make sense? No? <laughs> Thank you. Is there a cool way to insult somebody in Klingon? You thought I was speaking Klingon? Um, so is, I hou nie net dat daar van om mense te beledig nie, en enig van die dag, so is wat die punt. <sighs> so, nee, no, no, I don't have any ways to insult people. Lamar, it's my bot I set up for streams before my PC died. Hmm. Is, are they conditional? Did you set them up because? your PC was going to die or did you set the bot up and your PC died and then you couldn't have the, the commands working anymore? Edmund, you missed a little bit of the beginning of the stream, but 
but I was basically talking. I made my bliss piece today, dude. It's not, it's like in pieces right now. So I like have a bunch of footage. So it's like these little puzzle pieces. And I'm going to build a little Lego house <laughs> of my bliss piece, dude. It was a, it was a fantastic day, man. Like you can, you can catch a little bit of a glimpse of what the bliss piece is going to be if you rewatch the start of the stream. But it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be cool, man. I hope so, at least. I hope that you friends appreciate it. Mm, and I love you as well. Thank you. But the title is Day 176 Add Some Bliss to the Mix. Yeah, it's you, dude. It's by, inspired by you, literally, Edmund. Uh, it's not about your love for me. Those vibes you sent me went sour. Those vibes I sent you went sour. I'm sure they were good when he sent them, but they were they went sour in transit. I mean, it's like literally a few milliseconds, like maybe 200. No, I think it's like maybe 600 up to 2000 milliseconds of delay between me sending you vibes and you receiving them. Dude. I mean, it's not that bad. It's like two second, two second delay. Vibes can't go bad in two seconds. Takes millions and millions of years to degrade vibes. Bro, are you in South Africa? I went to Creer Park once. It was off the chain. Yeah, I am. I, I live in South Africa, friend. The Creer Voltaen is about 300, maybe 200 and something kilometers away from me. So like 160 to 250 miles away. What am I drinking water for today? Bless. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Blissful indeed. Mm, I won't be able to stay long today and tomorrow are my brother's last days in town so I'll be with him again this morning. My friend, you don't have to apologize or explain yourself at all. Send your <laughs> send our vibes to your brother as well and thank you for joining us, my friend. Oh, Mel doesn't sound so <laughs> Bro, um, the latter set up the bot to respond to commands people type and I couldn't use it anymore because my PC died. It's a Python script. Okay. That's interesting. So is it a Python script that is attached to like you're, you're streaming directly from RPAN Studio from your computer. And then in RPAN Studio, you have that chat box. So I'm guessing you're using that chat box somehow as like an output into your Python uh, script that you're running. And then that Python script, whoa. I don't know what bird that is, but I've never seen one like that. It's kind of like I'm, I think I'm gonna maybe use my main phone because it has better zoom capacity. Like you Reddit friends won't be able to see this now. And I'm terribly sorry. But I'm, man, it's so bad. Oh, it looks so bad. I'm sorry. I'm sorry both. Both YouTube friends and Reddit friends. <sighs> Let me just see if this thing is still actually recording. Stonks, it is. <laughs> it's this like kind of brownish bird with a big black tail. And instead of just flying up to the tree like a normal bird would, it kind of scoured the side of the tree upwards. Which is why it caught my attention in the first place. Mm, dude, I'm so pumped for that. Nice to see you excited about it too. I am, dude. I got really excited. Like, And it was such an in the moment thing. I think that's what made it so, so right to me because I was feeling so blissful in that moment. And I was like, you know, I'm going to capture this blissful experience. And that's going to be my bliss piece. Instead of trying to like force this like bliss out of myself, if you will. Um, that, um, is Edmund the non quarantine version of quarantine Tarantino? <laughs> I've never heard that before. <laughs> yeah, Tarantino is his actual name. Sorry, I mistook you for another editor. No, no worries at all, my friend. Mm, maybe vibes aren't compatible with my operating system. Maybe you need to reprogram yourself, friend. Uh, like expand your library of compatible vibes. I mean, if you're a more compatible... Man, that bird is weird. I, I I've never seen something like that. It is. It, uh, 
man, I wish I could just take exactly what I'm seeing and give this to you, friends. This bird looks so freaking sus. Why does he only walk? He only walks. I'm gonna try and show you Reddit friends. Try. It's so small. It's like a deer. Look at that dude. There's no zoom capacity whatsoever on here. It looks like he's eating something. What the hell? Is that a bird he's eating? <laughs> this is such bad entertainment. I am extremely sorry, but this is fascinating to me. Freaking burp I've never seen in my life. And why does he run? I've not seen this dude fly once. He just runs. I'm going to try and show you YouTube friends again. Uh, there we go. Yeah, this is better. He's a little bit closer now. <laughs> yeah, you can actually see it. Oh, what a weird bird. Why does he do that? He doesn't fly places, he just kind of strolls. What an interesting character. Man, I love being one of these creatures in nature, you know. Like being able to see something I've not seen before, it makes me happy. <laughs> it makes me so happy. Hey, Rena, thank you for joining us as well, my friend. Nah, it uses the Reddit API. Don't need our band studio. Okay, that's really sick, actually. Um, Bliss is a felt in a moment, friend. That is the perfect approach. I think so as well. Completely, Edmund. I'm going to be distracted for so long. Like, he's so big is the thing as well. Like, probably, probably the size of my forearm. Maybe a little bit bigger. Plus his tail. Like, that's really interesting, man. Like, especially since he's just walking. Maybe that's why I haven't seen them before. Because these dudes are just, like, walking on the ground constantly. I wish my grandma was here right now. My, my, my grandma used to watch burbs. And I understand why. They are fascinating little creatures. Like being able to ask her what that is. And why he's just walking. He's walked from there all the way to the other side of the, the yard now almost. I'm so fascinated and I can't stop. Okay, focus. No more looking at burps. Stop it, dude. Uh, come to my stream and I'll reboot your vibes accomplished. There we go. You know, you can rinse and repeat. The vibes will be sent, dude, no matter where you find them. Time for me to head out. Love you, dude. Loving all the energy. I will take some of it with me and love all of you friends as well. Thank you, Edmund, for joining us here and sharing some space with us, man. Send the love to your bro as well. And I hope you have a fantastic time. God bless. Something as arbitrary and small as watching burps can be blissful. Absolutely, like you lose touch with reality, blissful. Because you become so infatuated, right? With something external from yourself. Recognizing just the, the awe of nature. Man, <laughs> life is fantastic. Mm, you are the most beautiful when you are curious about something, Estiana. Oh, thank you, Jasmine. That is that is so wholesome. Damn, you're gonna make me blush. I don't think I've ever heard that string of sentence, oh, that string of words together. Wow, thank you so much, Jasmine. I really appreciate that, friend. I think curiosity is such a fantastic trait in humanity as well. And interestingly enough, we're not unique in curiosity alone. Cows and dogs and rats and snakes, like all, all animals have some curiosity in them. They want to know, right? We want to know what is inside that thing? What is, what is happening behind that door? What is, <laughs> what is that little bird thinking about? Oh, we like knowing things. 
That dude is still walking. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask my grandma tonight. What bird that is? Do some Google searching as well. I don't know. Like you see the problem as well. I feel bad for Google sometimes because I'll Google like bird with brown wings, black tail, white underbelly, walks most of the time, and Google is like, dude, how, what am I supposed to do with this information? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Not all birds wear capes. Not all birds wear capes. Uh, did your peacock get out? We don't have peacocks. We have some geese. We have some chickens. And apparently we have whatever that is. Like, I've seen a lot of birds around and I'm pretty familiar with, or at least comfortable with my familiarity of these burps. And then when I see something like that, you know, something that's so... Because it looks like a normal bird, right? The type of bird that would kind of fly around. And then it behaves kind of like a chicken. But it doesn't like walk like a chicken and peck the ground. It kind of gates when it runs. Like it has like a little bit of a gallop to it. <laughs> why? Like why? Why? I mean, like why would you evolve to kind of scour the ground like that as a burb? Like I understand chickens don't fly that, that good, if you will. Geese also don't fly that well. But if you're a bird looking bird, why run? Must be a very specific evolutionary reason for it. Maybe most of his food is on the ground. So it's more energetically efficient to run instead of to fly, I guess. Me trying to logic nature. <laughs> uh, he will probably get treed. Treed by birds? Treed by the bird. I'll get what? <laughs> uh, nature is the ultimate entertainment. It really is. Don't ever feel bad for Google. Yeah, I mean, I was I was being satirical, friend. Um, there should be a bird recognizing app. I know it exists for plants at least. It does. Like I actually have a plant recognizing website bookmarked on my bookmark bar. That's how important it to me. Like is to me. You can just take a photo. And it gives you like a bunch of matches and percentage wise closer matches and if you click on that match you get like a whole folder of other people who have also taken photos so you get to cross reference of different people's examples really cool app I mean you can find out what plants are nature is the ultimate entertainment I like that Rina mmm pheasant uh, geese fly bloody well they fly well for a bit friend they don't want to like they're not the type of flyers that kind of fly up to a tree and sit in there and then kind of swoop down and eat a, so a single bug on the ground and swoop back up like i've seen birds super agile like when when the when it starts raining and a bunch of like termites kind of come out of the ground and you see them flying everywhere you can literally see birds like swooping catching them out of the air and then you see them land on a little branch and they rub them against the stick to like get their wings off of them and then they eat them and they fly again and then they whoop this little like ant out of the air geese don't do that that's what i'm talking about right that agility if you have that much agility in flying then why walk <laughs> uh, da -dum. how are you my guy i'm doing well i'm doing well pm me <laughs> How are you doing, my friend? How's life in treating you? Hello. I heard you got some... Got some shouts, huh? Inside. You were barking at someone. Huh? Were you barking at someone? Oop, you little scoundrel, you. What are you eating? Eating my pashmina? No. You hold on to her a little bit and she wants to escape. Okay. See you again in a few seconds, I guess. <laughs> um, da -dum. Can't stay this whole one. I'll catch you later, Meltmore. Sending you love and vibes and smiles. Thank you, Simon. Like, I appreciate you staying for the other ones, dude. You don't have to stay. I, I appreciate you being here for the, for the time that you were there. Where in SA you located? Why you hurt me like this? Hmm? Why you hurt me like this? What do I do to deserve? The pain that you reflect upon me. I'm in like the Mpumalanga Limpopo area, friend. I got a vibe stick. Ow! 
I got a vibe stick, but used petroleum products to finish it. Will it vibe? Petroleum products. I mean, like, I don't know what that means, dude. What is a vibe stick? Is a vibe stick something that you dance with? Is it, an, is it like a stick this big that you've covered in petroleum jelly? Or is it like a stick that you dance with covered in petroleum jelly? I'm so curious, dude. What do you do with this vibe stick? Now I'm concerned. <laughs> I mean, maybe. Maybe it will be a vibe. Uh, I mean, the bird will chase you up the tree. Gunshots. And birds. And bliss. Hmm. I feel especially com contemplative, contemplative, contemplative today. <sighs> Trying to to just think about novelty, you know, because kind of casually deciding to walk to a place that I don't usually walk to, and literally doing it as I I stand up, I start walking, and then okay, now we're walking to this. This place I'm going to, right? It was just such a out of character thing for me to do, if you will. I was like, I'm gonna do this thing without me realizing I'm doing it. And while I was doing it, the experience of doing something I don't usually do almost created this sense of not uncertainty but unfamiliarity with how I'm supposed to be thinking about these these feelings and these environments. <sighs> And it really, like, legitimately opened me up to have a better experience and a more full experience because I didn't really have any expectations. It happened so spontaneously and so from a place of flow that as a result of that, it induced those feelings of bliss. And I wonder, you know, if the one has to come before the other, is novelty the thing that induces bliss because that is a is a weird assumption to make because it kind of changes the way that you have to see your own bliss and things because it kind of creates this narrative in which the only way for you to achieve bliss or to perceive bliss is by having novel experiences you know and i don't want to believe that i think that's kind of sucky because that would mean this constant chasing towards something to achieve this thing that you call bliss only for it now longer now no longer to be novel for you to chase again that novelty in order to achieve that bliss feeling right <sighs> maybe bliss inspires novelty maybe that's a better way to think about it oh yeah are you back you back to say hi to our friends don't you want to just chillax? Don't you want to chillax a little bit? Mm. She's eating my pashmina again. Ow. They're eating me again. I'm gonna read something worth saying, if you will. I feel like we haven't yet. Ooh, it is perfect. Perfect thing that I wanted to hear as well. You are not a victim of this world that you see. As I'm saying that a bee starts surrounding me. You are not a victim of this world that you see. A mind that chooses to be a victim of the world remains powerless. How does that incorporate with the thing I was talking about just before that, right? Novelty and bliss. Novelty in bliss. Bliss inside of novelty. Bliss is a result of novelty. And then... All of that perception. Mush, 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 mush. Because... Like, I, I feel like I don't want to become a victim of a cycle, you know? Especially when, it, when it's something that you can quantify. 
if you if you become a victim of something like let's say the pursuit of novelty and you believe that this novelty is something that's going to be external from you in a different place uh, in a different time and like i'm saying in a different time especially you know talking to myself because i like to talk about the future and the possibilities that will come in the future because it's going to be novel experiences at the end of the day oops and those novel experiences as great as they may be shouldn't be taking away from my bliss in these moments you know in the moments where those novel experiences don't exist and that's what i'm trying to make myself aware of today at least <clears throat> mm. Mm, 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 mm. Thank you for the wholesome friend. I appreciate it, Lazy. Hey, tech guy. Thank you for being here, Eric. Hope you had a wonderful day. Good morning to our friends in the US. Thank you so much. I had a fantastic day, Eric. Really, really, really great day. Been doing a lot of thinking, spent some time meditating, had some breathwork exercises, and uh, got my bliss piece shot, if you will. We're gonna, I'm gonna be, I think probably tomorrow I'll finish up the Bliss piece. I'm just trying to figure out if I want to attach music to it or not, probably. Mm, my vibe stick is just like yours, but three inches bigger. Ooh, and you covered it in petroleum? Did you cover it in petroleum to seal the wood or something? And if you wipe the petroleum off of that afterwards, like maybe then it would vibe, I'm guessing? What do you mean by day? by 176 days. Today is the 176th day of us showing up every single day for one another. Showing up to share space in a loving way, in an understanding way, in a way that we can kind of take a break, you know, from the regular grind we kind of go through. The things we think to take like just a few seconds to know you're in a space that there's going to be ideas shared your ideas can be shared, the things that you feel can be understood and felt. And if you want to, you can request for us to be sending you good energy as well. Because at the end of the day, whether or not you like think loving thoughts to someone when they're directly in front of you, or if you think loving thoughts to someone separated by the space that our universe is between each other, like that, there is no separation in that love being able to be shared. Like, it's the same energy that you're sharing with one another, regardless of where you are. And by coming to realize that we can come together in a space to love each other like that, you know, to become aware of one another, it, it grows our consciousness, friends. So, yeah, I'm, I'm never stopping. <laughs> I'm never, ever, ever stopping. I'm going to go forever, ever, 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 ever. This is just the, the 176th day. Mm. Oh, day 1000 is going to be a trip. <laughs> I think day 44,444 is going to be, like I'm going to be 120 years old or something. <laughs> Birds, bliss, and gunshots. Just another casual Friday. Yeah, I mean, like I've heard three gunshots in this one stream. Like some people are, are firing guns. Almost six months of streaming. Wow, before we know it, we'll pass 365. Oh, that guy, dude. Like I felt today especially, like time has passed so fast. Because last year, during this time, was when I was under house arrest. Like around, yeah, around this time was when I was under house arrest. And just the stark contrast and difference to you friends wondering, what the fuck to do with house arrest? I was in China, my visa expired. I was still teaching with expired visa. The police came to the school, asked me for my visa, told me my visa is expired. I got a fine. I had to be under house arrest while they get my passport to find out how much they were going to find me. I paid my fine. I got my passport back. Yeah. Okay. So, and then, you know, where I am right now, being able to do what it is we're doing right now, being able to share the ideas that we're sharing right now and being able to experience bliss from a perspective of intention, you know, genuine intention it's it's such a like a stark contrast from where we've come from i am here because i broke my leg skateboarding and cried for a week and then realized my life is all about skateboarding you realized after you broke your leg skateboarding that your life is about skateboarding oh 
man, my lower back is hurting right now for some reason. <sighs> I want to read that again. My life is all about skateboarding. I mean, each to their own. I'm happy for you, my friend, then. I'm happy that you realize what your life is about. Your accent to me is half Swedish, half South African. That's an interesting one. I haven't heard that one before. It might have something to do. No, I can't say shit like that, can I? I feel a lot of the English that I know right now, I learned from like watching YouTube videos. And in my teenage years, I had like a big PewDiePie thing. I was like, every single video, I mean, the dude uploaded daily. I was there daily. I was like, oh wait, dude, let's go. <laughs> it was so fun to just be able to know that coming home, I would have this, like this person to spend time with that, that continually did this thing, be it for me, be it for the internet. It was, it was really blessed. Uh, sorry about your leg, Minecraft. Is your skateboard okay? <laughs> it rolled off the hill and my skateboard was 205 bugs, big rip. I'm so sorry, dude. I mean, if it rolled off the hill, isn't it just at the bottom of the hill? I hope that you can find it again, friend. That's pretty problematic. The rolling of skateboards down hills. Sounds like it. I have not seen you for a while, mate. Hope you've been well. Hey, dirty dishwater. It's been a while, friend. Thank you for joining us again. Done any dancing recently? We danced two days ago. Yesterday, we had like a kalimba stream. This morning, I slept for 11 hours. Tomorrow, we're gonna dance again. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, Kristen, Jesse's giving me hugs and wholesomes. Thank you so much, friends. I appreciate your love. Do you believe in God? Yes, I do, friend. At least, I believe in the concept of God. The, the thing that people try and encapsulate when they use the word God. Right, some people say the universe, some people say source, some people say consciousness, some people say Allah, some people say Buddha, some people, whatever word you want to attach to that thing that we can't understand, I believe there is something larger than us, right? And you can't, you can't argue with that. Just look at the, the very big universe around you. We're part of something larger than ourselves. And in this being part of this larger thing than ourselves, there is this unity in nature. Nature is this union, and we're a part of that union. And it's in that union that I believe God is, that all-encompassing nature of everything, if you will. Mm -hmm. What would you say to someone who wants to rid themselves of the victim mindset? I feel like that's so much easier said than done. I feel like this is this is something that I kind of went through myself as well, Eric, because when I was 14, 15, 16, like at the peak of my depression, I was also practicing this victim mindset of like it was me versus everything else, you know, all of existence versus small little me. And I think that was where like the root of my victim mindset really came from was with this understanding that I'm this small, like separate individual part. And then there is all the, all the rest, if you will. And it was like me separating myself from all of the rest. And in that separation, it was like, a, again, like a, a worrying about being completely separated. And then no, this whole not caring about my separation from it right my death n nobody caring about that and that was like an obsession it was like it was like i felt like a victim towards this world because it wouldn't care if i died so if it was like a person watching another person drown not caring whether or not i died and it was like i, I felt like i was the person drowning and the world was the one watching and it was this this victim mentality of like oh you know, like me and this other person are separate. And then this realization of like, we're both the same person, right? I'm the one watching this person drowning. And also at the same time, simultaneously the person drowning and realizing that and like the, the coming together of those two like concepts, the, the external from myself and the, the dark part of myself, right? The person that is standing on dry land and the person that is drowning and meeting each other in the middle 
finding that there is technically no separation and in that non-separation I can't be a victim in this whole right it's a spectrum whether or not I'm standing all the way on the sand or whether or not I've walked all the way deep into the ocean and now I can no longer swim right it's like seeing a copy of yourself that stood like what you were like okay so let's imagine time dilation you're standing on the beach watching out on the beach right and you stood there for so long and in that specific spot there is something that's called matter retention or time time matter retention so while you were standing there a copy of you formed in that position that you were standing in and then you walked into the ocean and the high tide came and you started drowning and you looked back and this copy of yourself is still standing there. And you see this copy of yourself and you're judging this copy of yourself for not helping you. But it's you looking back at you, right? I'm, I'm, I mean, that is such a trippy way of trying to think about it. And I know it doesn't make any sense. But I mean, can these things make sense? The infinite nature of our reality and us being a part of that infinite nature, being infinite in nature. It's a little bit much for my small monkey brain to kind of wrap its head around. But I try. We try, right? We do try. Uh, the day number used to be higher. Relapsed? No, friend. No, it wasn't higher. Maybe someone else. Today is day 176. I am pretty sure. I make sure. Spill the tea. Meditating doesn't really build the core. Build the core. All religions love being lumped together. I don't. I don't know what you mean with meditating doesn't really build the core. You mean oh, like the re reason my back is hurting is because I'm meditating. No, not exactly. Like I, I have some minor back issues, but yeah, exercise has compensated a little bit for that. The hill is very high. I was rolling down the highway. You sleep for eleven hours. I sleep for three hours. Yeah, like, I get all of the hours you don't sleep, friend. Like, it gets sent to me, and then I have to sleep your hours for you. Like, dude, please sleep seven hours, man. I need I need more time in my day, bro. How can you do this to me? Every single night you just sleep three hours, I get four hours extra taxed onto my sleep, dude. And I'm just like, knocked. <laughs> I'm joking, dude. No, no, I just slept 11 hours this morning. But usually I sleep about seven to seven and a half hours. All religions love being lumped together, and that's why they share churches. I don't know about that accomplished pay. You are awesome. I will follow. Thank you, Minecraft. I appreciate your follow, friend. I look forward to seeing you again and spending some time with you again and co-creating with you as well. Separation is what makes us feel like a victim. Exactly. Exactly. Because you're not separate from it. It's like this, this infinitely self-eating snake, right? Another way of thinking about it. Like the, the tail of the snake might feel like a victim, where the head of the snake feels like the winner of that interaction, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're not separate from it. Not at all. Life doesn't make sense, but yes, we must try. It's the only thing we can do, Eric. It's literally the only thing we can do. Technically, each and every single one of our lives is this ultimate experiment of figuring out how we're supposed to live. And there's no one way. Like, there's no, like, you do this and then this happens. Fortunately, that's not how it works. Because if it did work that way, life would be way too predictable. And we don't like things that are too predictable. Think about a movie, right? If you know exactly what's going to happen in the movie, you're like, kind of... Mm. I'm not really feeling it. Same thing is going to be with life. If things were predictable, we wouldn't be having fun. And to like, think of yourself as a victim to that unpredictability of nature is, is like, how can you be surprised by anything that happens in nature? Mm? <laughs> nature is so fantastically weird. And things happen, you know, that you would never even imagine. And yet, how can you imagine that anything of your perspective is weird when there is just the infinite nature of this weirdness, if you will. This poor little burb landed here as well. Hey, dude. Hello. <laughs> uh, life. 
uh, you might be thinking of someone else. There's a streamer who was putting the number of days he was sober. Yeah, that's right as well. Thank you so much, that guy. Life makes sense. We just don't have the proper tools to experience it without training our senses. Yeah, like I think it's just we overcomplicate things because we technically have 20 senses as human beings, right? Like thirst, hunger, uh, being cold versus being hot. All of these things are like basically individual senses. <sighs> We're not... Like, the thing is as well, like, a way to think of it, at least in my own opinion, is just, if you look at how small of a bandwidth, or well, a wavelength, sorry is the right word, our eyes pick up, there is so much more information out here in nature, like an infinite amount of information out in nature, we just can't perceive it because we're experiencing a very small slither of that. And it's almost in experiencing a larger slither than we used to, but still a small slither in the grand scheme of things that we have this like propensity to chase or to to like grasp for more when like the the stopping of that grasping for it is basically what gives you more of that which is so counterintuitive and that's why it's so difficult for a lot of people to wrap their heads around it's difficult for me to still wrap my head around that because it's it's literally paradoxical in nature you need to not want it to get it, right? How does that make sense, dude? I don't know. <laughs> I sleep three hours and then I go skateboard at 3 a.m. But now I'm depressed, lol. Nothing makes sense. I'm sorry, my friend. I mean, here we are with you, though. Here we are with you. Sometimes things don't make sense. And if things always made sense, then that would be stale as well. So, I mean, here we are, friend. Here we are experiencing new things. Love and light to all of your friends here. Thank you, Kristen. I appreciate it so much. We have Dane here as well. Wait. Please share some of those sleeping hours, Meltmore. Also, <laughs> If only it worked like that. Man, that would be hilarious. We have, like, dedicated people just for sleeping. They just sleep 24 hours. You know, they like okay, 23 hours, they wake up once to eat something and drink some water, go to the bathroom, and then they sleep again. And then people just hire them to sleep for them. And they just like kind of go nonstop. <laughs> they never sleep because I have a dude that sleeps for me. What? <laughs> yeah, I, I pay a other human being to sleep for me. Now, what do you, what do you mean he sleeps for you? Yeah, so he sleeps an extra nine hours a day and then I don't have to. What do you mean? <laughs> right? That would be hilarious. Oh, also, hi. Hey, Dave. It's nice to have you here. Itching? Are you itching, David? I'm sorry to hear that. The man is high as fuck. I'm happy you think so, friend. Sir Silver? I don't know where the random silver came from. I've taken 10 hits and I've never been on some shit like this before. My friend, maybe that says something. Hmm. Hmm, maybe that says something. Yo, 10 hits and you've never been able to reach where it is I'm right now. You flatter me, friend, because that says, that's that's a lot of information to convey in a single message, dude. <sighs> Man. It's been proven, actually been proven, that administering lions or hits, as this person said, to any mammal stimulates the production of dolphins 600%. Or a thousand percent, isn't it? It's either 600 or a thousand percent, regardless. <sighs> what? What? Did you hear what I just said? So you phrase, I'm, I'm speaking in kind of code, right? Dolphins is... Dimethyltryptamine. I don't know if I'm going to be able to bypass the bots by saying stuff like that. And lions is lysergic acid. So lysergic acid stimulates the production in the own, like endogenously in the own human brain to produce dimethyltryptamine up to 600 to 1000% more of it. Right, right. 
So the fact that you think that you can't reach that amount of information, or basically what that says to us is that the human brain produces the information. And the, the thing, the external substance is almost like second nature to that. Like you're not experiencing psychedelic, you're experiencing your own brain's release of the time I felt trapped in me. So that's what we're doing right now, right? It plays a very big role in our perception of reality. So my perception of reality shapes the things that I choose to say, the things that I feel, things that I understand. And then sharing that perception of reality can again, in turn, release these neurochemicals in you, friends. Right? You understand what I'm trying to say? We're already high. We're already carrying, if you will, constantly. It's literally produced by our own bodies. And when I do stuff like breathing exercises, then it like, it kind of takes that to a, like a new notch. Then I'm like, oh goodness, where is me and where does earth start, right? It's this like complete melting together of experience. Like I, I no longer feel, feel the boundaries between me and what is. Because I realize I am that what is, <laughs> right? You were capable of this stuff just through meditation, just through breathing exercises. You don't need something external from yourself. That is what we should be coming, like, really aware of. Huh? Don't, don't, you, don't you like that? Don't, doesn't it like, make you so happy? It makes me happy. Like, it, it just fascinates me to what we as human beings can accomplish and what more we're going to find out about just consciousness in general. Right, the vibe. I'm trying to, friend. I'm really trying to. I'm a recent convert to vibeology. <laughs> Upvote is my sacred mint. Thank you, Silver. <laughs> Not Slither Up. <laughs> Thank you, friend. I appreciate your vibeology. Uh, theology? Is it a theology? Or is it the philosophy? Now I'm curious as well. Is this vibeology? Or is it a whole new ology of its own? It doesn't fall under theology or philosophy. Now I'm curious, dude. Now you have to tell me. If it does make your tiredness, if it does take your tiredness away, then I will hire. Take what is what is gonna take your tiredness away? And oh oh you mean the hiring? Oh yeah, the person that sleeps for you. That would be such a weird thing. I don't think I would be able to do that. Because I kind of low-key enjoy sleeping, for one. And I can't think that that is like a life experience that I would want. I mean, maybe someone is just like, dude, I'm tired. Life is low-key, not that great for me. I just kind of want to sleep 23 hours a day and get paid doing that. And then take like two weeks off to go and spend some of my money and then I sleep again. I mean, like, I'm like, this is a possibility right now in the grand mind of God. Everything is possible in or on the grand infinite scape of the universe everything is possible so there is a universe in which that is a real thing i don't think it works though like it technically neurochemically it doesn't make sense because when we sleep our brains get washed by this like neural liquid that kind of clears away some of the oxidation and like spent chemicals and washes that stuff literally off of your brain as you're sleeping that's why it's essential for you to sleep enough Otherwise, there's a buildup of toxic neurochemicals in your brain. It's not exactly where you want them. So, neurologically slash neurochemically, it doesn't make any sense that that would be something that's possible. But maybe if in a society where you can, like, channel psychic energy to other beings, <laughs> then yes, I think it would be possible. A genie grants you three wishes. What do you ask for? I wish that... Every single human being has a place to live. I wish that every single human being has food to eat at all times. And I wish that every single human being has the inspiration to create a better world. Done. Life, like that is the three wishes that is going to create a society where everyone had the three wishes. Right? Stonks, dude. Life's good. Mm, drum, drum. <clears throat> not to be ugly no ugliness at all friend <laughs> like perceive this there's, there's only beauty ah <sighs> there's so much of it as well mm, love the way you're trying to censor words and sing 
<laughs> Thank you, Rina, for uh, acknowledging some of the effort. Good work around laughing. <laughs> to be honest, I did not understand a word. I don't know if I'm stupid or what. It's, yeah, it's like neurochemistry, friend. Or like at least some sort of understanding of that. Like trying to implement it in a very personal and direct way to our own experience. It's not necessarily something that you can be like, okay, this is how you're going to do it. And then things are just going to work in the way that they will. I mean, like if anything, try meditating, try doing breathwork exercises. Like that's, that's what I'm suggesting. Like just that. You're not stupid friend, he's talking in code. Yeah, I was talking in code as well. I want to see Melt more. Do a Reddit in the Kitchen stream one day. Who's with me? I'll do a Reddit in the Kitchen, Salty. Like I'm planning on going like full keto, hardcore again now within the next few weeks. I kind of took a break, but I've been feeling kind of not good on top of that. But the thing as well is like when you drop out of keto, like you feel so bad and then you eat sugar and then the sugar makes you feel bad, and then you eat sugar again to make yourself feel better from the bad that you felt. Yeah, it's like, it's just more like discipline at the end of the day. But we're getting back into it. So maybe then I will actually do some Red in the Kitchen. The problem is, though, Salty, I'm only gonna have Red in the Kitchen streams like very late at night for our American friends. It's kind of a bummer. I mean, I could do it. It's, yeah, it's either going to be very early morning or it's going to be right in the middle of the night for a lot of your friends. Yeah. Kitchen plus melt more equals plenty of yes. <laughs> plenty of yes. I'm happy you're also on board, Dave. Your friend's going to have to stay up late if you want to join me in the kitchen. What is better, bad actions with good intentions or positive actions with bad intentions? So, like, you can't really have positive actions with bad intentions, right? Like, you can't be like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna help this person pay off their student loans so that they don't have any sense of responsibility when it comes to paying for their own things. Ha! Right? Like, that, I mean, that's a bad intention to do a good thing, but it doesn't really make sense. Where if you're doing bad things, even though you're like, I'm going to hurt this person so they realize they can't trust the world, right? You know, I mean, I think then in that case, positive actions with bad intentions would be better. You need to see melt in every room and place on this planet. <laughs> every single room. Like, I'll just, I'll just go to like, I'll walk down London and I'll be like knocking on every single one of the doors. The people in the residence, hello, yes, sir. Um, I, I, I'm so sorry to bother you. But I made this commitment to show every single room on the entire planet to my internet friends. Excuse me? <laughs> yeah, so if you just kind of like let me in. <laughs> my kids are sleepy. I'll, I'll, I'll just peek into their room and I'll, I'll go out again. I won't wake them, I promise. <laughs> uh, but the problem is I feel that sleeping wastes the time of my day. Sleeping is essential, friend. I mean, think of it as you prepping yourself energetically neurochemically for your next day so that you may appreciate the hours that you are awake in even more mm -mm. sleeping is the most important part of the day though yeah it's very important my leg made me depressed so much that i'm here watching reddit and eating five packets of chips and, and four cooks my friend i mean like do that do that right i've done that as well like for me i think i think the lowest I've ever been. I'm not gonna tell this story, man. I feel like I'm, I'm like tearing a part of my experience open and being like, look, look at how disgusting he was. Anyway, uh, our like this was in China. I lived completely alone, and they like gave us a Christmas gift, and this Christmas gift composed of, uh, I think two two 12 packs of beer so like 24 beers and like i think 24 like kids packs of chips something like that like one of those like industrial bags with the different flavors and stuff and i literally sat on the couch feeling sorry for myself because it was christmas you know it was christmas i was spending my entire christmas alone in china and i was like feeling so sorry for myself and yeah literally 
just drank those beers and ate those chips, dude. And I mean, here we are now, right? It's okay to do those things as well. Break down, slob out. Like, it's just don't continue doing that indefinitely because that's also not going to be a great experience. It might feel good to kind of do that for a bit. <sighs> experience that, feel that, live into that humanness of yourself and then realize that that is not something that's sustainable and you can do other things. What are you drinking? Water. Vodka, just to guess. Yes, dude. I'm just like slurping vodka as I'm talking. No, man, that's a bit much, dude. <laughs> hey, Lane, it's nice of you to be here. Hey, Guzzler, happy to see you as well, friend. Uh, it needs a fingerboard. <laughs> yeah, you need fingerboards, dude. You could get good at that. Yes, it's easy to stay keto if you care about feeling good. Exactly, exactly, Irina. Because when you're in like properly on keto, you just have like a clear mind space. You feel, you just feel kind of good. That's just how it is. And then as soon as you break that, it like starts a cycle. I lost the one I have. Get another one, dude. Get another fingerboard. I mean, fingerboards are like, what, 20 bucks or something. Bless. Mm -mm -mm. Feeding the pigeons on my BMW. At my BMW dealership. Uh, that's, that's hilarious, dude. <laughs> you anti-corporate, you. No, for example, getting someone's trust by good things then hurt them happens to me a lot getting someone's trust by doing good things for them and then hurting them happens to you a lot hmm like i'm not sure if i am equipped to, to like say anything on that because the same happens to me where People recognize that I want to see the best in people and then take advantage of that. That happens to, I think, a lot of people that want to bring good into the world. But again, I've, I've changed my perspective from thinking of it like I'm the victim of that happening. I'm the victim of them hurting me, even though I only had the intention of giving them love and light. But instead of thinking like, oh, they hurt me, they like took something away from me. I think of it from, like, I, I could still give them something. Even though their intention wasn't necessarily to do the same for me, I still could do something like that for them. And that giving of myself to them is infinitely more valuable than whatever they could give to me at the end of the day. So there's no loss. It's only a net positive by giving yourself lovingly. No, for example, getting someone to... Str oh, I've already done one. The Thor voice. Do you like my Thor voice, good sir? This would be the voice I use to voice over things. Yes. <laughs> this has suddenly turned into an advert for my voiceovering skills. Please, one friend watching in the voiceovering industry, give me a job. I'm severely... I'm just... <laughs> Kinda. Maybe. Me? Is there, is it possible, maybe like randomly, one person just happens to be in the voiceover industry, was scrolling through Reddit, tuned in, and I start talking to him. Taily Poo, Taily Poo, give me back my Taily Poo. Dude, what is a Taily Poo? Uncle Becky, like that, that is the thing that confused me the most. Like, I was like listening to this entire scary story, hearing the scratches on the walls. But I couldn't be scared because my mind was like reeling with what the, in the what is a taily poo? What is that? Like I'm thinking of it like as maybe it's like this toy, a tail, <laughs> right? Like a severed tail of an animal. Maybe that's why he got the taily poo because he molded that, that poor person. Uncle Becky, you were such a gem, man. You would all be like, you should be friends, do you guys haven't seen it? Uncle Becky did like a spooky stream and then Aunt B was like making sounds and Uncle Becky was reading the scary story and I think Emma, I don't know, maybe Bubby was there as well. I heard them at the end of it. It was just so blessed. Mm. Uh, he is Thor. No, I'm not more actually. What is kissing Natalie Portman like? I don't know, friend. Maybe one day I'll be able to tell you. True that. That's a dream right there, mate. Chips and beer. Dude, it was chips and beer, man. And I, like, it was nice. Like, I'm not even gonna sugarcoat it. I had a good time eating chips and beer. But 
would I continue doing that indefinitely for the rest of my life? No, because that's going to kill me, right? But doing that once in a year, eh, not too bad. I think I'm doing pretty good, right? Once in a year, it's kind of fine. Pig out, enjoy yourself, get into the, the feeling of just being a human being, to do what it is you want to do, to not necessarily have all of these judgments on yourself of is what I'm doing right now just good for me, right? Being completely obsessed with always having this like, I want to say almost superiority to what it is you're doing. And I feel I'm a big victim of that, right? Where I'll like take a, a cheat day or something. And then I will have such a hard time eating the things that I'm supposed to now enjoy because I have this subliminal judgment of what it is I'm doing. And I'm like, no, you don't want that. You don't want to feel that way when you're trying to enjoy something, at least in my personal experience. And it's also like a balance of you have to obviously have some sort of barrier because you should in some way judge the things that you're doing. Like me, me judging and saying to myself, doing this, like eating, eating chips and drinking beer isn't something I can sustainably do forever, right? That is technically a judgment that I'm forming. And forming that judgment protects me from, like, so instead of instead of thinking as a judgment, I'm going to think of it as, as a rendered experience in my own psyche, right? I can imagine myself eating chips and drinking beer every day for the next year and a half and kind of picture where I'll end up as a result of that. The amount of calories that I'll consume, how much weight I'll gain, how, how detrimental that will be to my health, how detrimental that will be to my psyche and my like mental capacity, all of these things, and kind of come to the conclusion that that is not necessarily something that I want to do to myself, right? I think we should do that with more things. <laughs> hey, Aunt B, I'm happy to see you here as well. Thank you for sharing the space with us, friends. Uh, da -da. That's a dream right there, Mel. Sending you love to you, friend. Thank you. Hey, Tactful. It's nice to see you as well, Trevor. Been super busy with work and school. I'm really happy I caught the stream today. I'm also happy you're here with us, friend. Mm. We have East Coast Rabbit here as well. We have uh, Scarmelia here as well. It's nice to have you, friends, here. No, I mean, like, people get my trust. Then they call the police on me, like, literally. Uh, dude. What, like, what are you doing that warrants them calling the police on you? Like, maybe that's the question you have to ask yourself. <laughs> Holy crap, Meltmore. Caught up in the chat. I mean, you jinxed me, Salty. You've jinxed me now. Now I'm, I'm far behind again, dude. How dare you? <laughs> hey, Melt. Court today. Gotta try for more time. Nervous. <sighs> I'm imagining your face, Carmelia. You look kind of, like, stressed. Like you're, like, biting your nail. And I'm, like, seeing you kind of like relax I see you like a smile coming over your face and I see you like pucker up gain some self-confidence in yourself and you you walk into that court and you just feel good right you can you can speak with honesty from your heart I believe in you friend I hope everything goes well me and Bubby were asleep uh, it was dad daughter time oh that sounds fantastic oh what that's a trip, Aunt B. I actually thought it was you who was making some of the extra sounds. It was Emma? That is even better, man. That makes me so happy. Smells like a... <laughs> uh, East Coast rabbit. Hey, thank you, my friend, for being here. Mm -hmm. My body can't tolerate stuff like that because my stomach hurts and I feel sick. Like, I also felt sick. I actually, like, ended up throwing up as a result of that binge as well. So, like, I literally felt like I was poisoning myself. I felt like... I was like, oh, this is, yeah, this is not what you're supposed to be doing to yourself, dude. But, I mean, it was an in-the-moment, impulsive, I'm a human being, om-nom-nom type of thing, dude. And for what it was, it was an experience that I felt I wouldn't take away from myself, even if I had the capacity to. Kind of freaking out today, core today. Hope uh, they give me more time. I've sent you some good vibes, Carmelia, I'm sure as well. Everything in moderation. There you go, Uncle Becky. Try all things and keep the good, right? Everything in moderation is such an important life lesson to, to really take into consideration. Because I feel I do take things to extremes. And like I had this conversation with another friend as well. 
about taking things to extremes and he said that like maybe it is okay to take like one or two things to an extreme because I do believe what we're doing right now with the streaming is me taking something to a little bit of an extreme right I've made this commitment to do this every single day and that is you know arguably an extreme thing to commit to and we were having this conversation about these extremes and then choosing to kind of go into an extreme with an intention right to specifically say that I've, I've experienced these things in my life I have realized what I feel is important to myself and to my expression of my life and then really taking that understanding and committing to that you know with that intention of almost realizing into that the, the most you can being as fantastic at this thing that you feel is important as you possibly can be <sighs> you know and I feel that that kind of it breaks maybe there's an exception to the rule of everything in moderation as well what do you feel uncle becky does it, does it make sense what i'm saying thank you for the hugs trevor i appreciate it scar good luck sweetie uh keep me posted i'm sure she will please do friend uh positive thoughts to use carmelia absolutely hello from the u.s east coast glad to catch your stream again it's nice to see you as well my friend thank you for joining us <sighs> Audi Club. Audi Club, Greg? Do you drive an Audi, Greg? What Audis do you drive, dude? How long have you been driving your Audi? And how many gearbox problems have you had? My mom got a car and the car already had a gearbox problem. And my brother was like, oh, it's a steal. There's just there's something wrong with the gearbox. And I was like, mm, looks sus. So still bought the car. My brother and my dad still bought the car. Um, then it like breaks down the first time it gets fixed it's because they like forgot to like oil the other side of the gearbox or something like that. So it gets fixed again. They drive again, breaks again. Uh, they didn't like install some in, like essential part or whatever. Then gets taken to now a new place. And now it's been like 10 weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. My brother also drives an Audi. Like he has a, an A3. Yeah. He's been happy with that one at least. Like I don't know why why like I wanna know now. Audi, Greg, dude. I just wanna know. Great advice, dude. I'm happy you appreciate it, friend. Like it's not supposed to be advice at the end of the day. I'm just sharing my my direct experience. What you take from that is going to be your direct experience at the end of the day. Because I can't exactly translate the lessons I've learned or the feelings I've felt directly to you. But I can, in translating it, experience or at least stimulate experience feeling in you. And I want you to take that, you know, stimulated experience as your experience. Feel from that source. Feel from that understanding within yourself. Don't listen to me. I don't know anything. Mm -hmm. Uh audio hello hello as well uh, i did nothing they just want to hurt me and they accuse me of hitting them with my skateboard and they are just like very pathetic at least i had proof i did not do it i went i almost went to jail court got cancelled thank goodness i almost broke finger like i'm curious as well dude like why would someone become friends with you go to your apartment and then call the cops and, and accuse you of hitting them with your skateboard. Like maybe you're making like interesting or weird characters as friends. Do excuse the sounds you'll hear. Man, I'm like really trying to rack my head around it. Maybe you're, you just have a weird aura, dude. Maybe they lose their minds around you. Melt, may I ask you what your given name is? My given name, my civilian name... East Coast Rabbit is Estian. That's the the name people have been calling me my entire life. I'm an Audi lifer, been driving them my whole adult life. Have an S3 at the moment. Sorry to hear you've got those issues. They definitely have their idiosyncrasies. Yeah, unfortunately. It's yeah, it's a little bit of a of a bummer. And it's like I kind of feel like it's malicious in nature as well. Like, they kind of fix your shit 
just a little bit so that it will break later so that you can come back and fit your shit a little bit again. <coughs> it's un unacceptable in my opinion. Man, <coughs> something is... My fi oh, it's my brother. He's uh, like, what do you call it? Kicking up dust with a whip in the background. That's handsome. Estian. Um, after the I, two A's and then an N. They are bad people. I literally help them come to this country and they always act like they are the boss of everything and I am a slave. You help them come to your country. Like, man, dude, what friends are you making? Like, I'm so curious about the relationship you have with the people that you're in a relationship with. Like, if you want to make friends, I would recommend you not bringing them into your country as your first resort. I think maybe, like, go to a place that you would really enjoy doing something that you do normally. Like, be it if you enjoy skating, be it if you enjoy like fishing, be it if you enjoy reading, just go to places, like go to bookstores, go to conventions where people do stuff like that. And this, then just kind of talk to people, you know, that like the same stuff that you do, form some sort of understanding. And like that's, I, unless in my opinion, how I've made friends in my life, nobody has accused me of assaulting them before, fortunately. Shoo! <laughs> um, never heard that name. It's nice. Thank you. Thank you, friend, for asking. Uh, thank you, Aunt B, for giving her the correct spelling as well. They are not friends, really. Grandpa died, and I said I want to go to his funeral. He literally stole my passport. I really want revenge. Mine is Gale. Thank you for telling me, East Coast Rabbit. Gale. Man, I'm gonna try and remember your name, friend. Yes. Gale. Am I saying that correctly? <clears throat> East Coast Rabbit is Gale. I think I might be able to remember. I think I might be able to remember. And friend, yeah, like revenge at the end of the day as well. Minecraft boxes. Again, as I said, the understanding that you are not a victim. Nobody can ever take anything from you. If you kind of spend your own time being hateful and conniving and planning you know, to do in this destructive way to, to get your revenge at the end of the day, you're just poisoning your own experience. You're poisoning yourself with your experience. You're not doing anything to that person in your revenge planning. You're like literally ruining your own life experience, planning these horrible things. And when you're planning these horrible things, you're quite literally creating the separation from yourself and this like, entity that is doing these things in your avenging fantasies right you become judgmental of yourself <clears throat> and that becomes a very negative loop that you don't want to get caught in dude because now you act out of revenge and then this person wants to now hurt you as well so now again you create this sense of someone conniving someone planning these negative things towards you and instead of creating you know a system in which you can forgive that person and love that person regardless of the things that they've done to you you're like hurting yourself holding on to the cactus that they've handed you you know just let it go friend that's the only thing you can do let it go forgive them and love them nonetheless revenge is a never-ending cycle don't engage in it yeah there we go i really think you are going through requires a lawyer or someone professional man i feel that as well dude sounds like some some really interesting like scenarios like scenarios that i've never heard in my life the problem is he even accused me of trying to kidnap and harm their kids when I was giving them money for their rent. Court got cancelled. Dude, yeah, like it feels like this should be something that you should take up with the police. Dino, great advice. I agree as well. Yeah, like get some legal advice, friend, of this stuff. <clears throat> what country are you in now? I'm also curious. Like I'm, I'm living in South Africa, but my craft... I'm, I'm wondering what country you're living in. I don't feel like you live in America. I think this is a drama king slash queen. I mean, I'm feeling that way as well, but I'm not going to shy away from that as well. I'm a drama king myself sometimes as well. My friends, I appreciate the time that you've shared with us. Turkey for three years right now. Thank you for telling us. 
I love you so much. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow, everyone.